Hey guys, Repent Conservative here. Okay, so I'm going over the PDF document from the Women's March on Washington. Oh my gosh. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. If you want to go read it, go read it. Draw your own conclusions. See if I'm right or wrong. Tell me if I'm right or wrong down in the comments below. But anyway, so... They cover a lot of things, and they don't recognize the illegal immigration. Well, I wonder why. Um, given that this was a, a liberal event, and given that Madonna spewed off about thoughts of blowing up the White House, that is an American citizen. Any American citizen should be your first sign that shit's not right with that woman. Then we had Ashley Judd spewing off about her period and having to pay taxes on tampons and pads and other things just for her period. Well, as a guy, I don't want to pay taxes on condoms. But I'm not taking to a stage and bitching about it. But you know what? Nobody said anything about a man having to use a condom. Now, I know it's, it's, you know, it's Hollywood at its worst in Washington, D.C. You know, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't Madonna supposed to leave the U.S.? And it's, instead, she's windbagging it the day after Trump's elected, or Trump's uh, sworn in as president of the United States. Oh, ye special snowflakes. Okay. So, the Women's March on Washington PDF covers what their bullet points are. And you can go read the bullet points if you want, but I'm just going to touch on one or two of them here. We believe gender justice is racial justice is economic justice. We must create a society in which all women, including black women, indigenous women, poor women, migrant women, disabled women, Muslim women, lesbian, queer, trans women, women are free and able to care for and nurture themselves and, and their families. I agree with all that. Okay. That they're entitled to safe environments. Okay. In their own home. That's why I'm safe. Okay. That's my safe space. As a Republican, I will tell you, my safe space is my home. And I have the right to protect and defend it. Now, two bullet points down from that. We believe in accountability and justice for police brutality and ending racial profiling and targeting of communities of color and indigenous peoples. In the last I looked, the Native American population of the United States policed itself pretty much with just a few white officers, and the majority of their officers are Native American. Yes, women are more likely to be sexually assaulted by police officers, but even that is very, very, very rare. Women with disabilities are disproportionately likely to ex experience the use of force at the hands of police. Not very true there. I've yet to see a police officer use physical force on somebody with, with a physical disability or impairment. This is what's real funny, and this is the one I really want to get to. We also call for an immediate end to arming police with military-grade weapons and military tactics that are wreaking havoc on communities of color and sovereign tribal lands. No woman, mother, no woman or mother should have to fear that her loved ones will be harmed at the hands of those who are sworn to protect. Okay. Now, Mahdi is a friend of mine. He's of color. He's also Islamic. And he will tell you 
parents need to train their children. Okay? You don't fight with a police officer. You don't try to take his gun. Okay? You don't go kill an officer like what happened just here recently down in Florida and try to get away because you don't want to go to jail. Something y'all are missing is that these gang members get their hands on stolen weapons every day. Every day. These guns are not legally purchased, they're stolen and then resold. Out on the street, no registration, no nothing. And then they're used in violent crimes against women, women of color, I don't know what the statistics are for the indigenous population in the United States for violence against women. I'm pretty sure it's probably slightly above the national average. Okay. And as somebody who is a descendant of First Nations, yeah, that affects me. Okay. <clears throat> But let's face it, in the inner cities, if you sent police officers in there with single shots, single shot weapons, it'd be a massacre. It would be disgusting. And you guys would cheer. You would. The reason why we arm and train our police with military style weapons, okay, and I'm assuming you're talking about the AR-15 and the MP5s and those, uh, those style weapons is because you're tired of seeing the kids get outgunned. Well, I'm sorry. Kids need to be outgunned. The gang members need to be outgunned. But the problem is, is that the police are having a hard time when these kids are modifying their SKSs, which is a variant of the AK-47. It's a semi-automatic that can be, in certain models from certain countries, modified to become fully automatic. And this is a preferred weapon because of the magazine size of gang members. Or these kids are out there stealing 12 gauge hunting shotguns and sawing them off. You bet, I'm all for having police officers use with restraint their weapons. But we as parents have got to train our children when we're pulled over by police, when we're stopped by police, we cooperate. We stand for our rights, but we cooperate. Okay? We ask questions of the police, but we cooperate. If they want to arrest us, let them arrest us. If it's arrest for not detaining, and we are not under, we were not under arrest when we were detained, and that there was no probable cause for the detainment, we sue. That's what we do. That's how we do it. You ask questions. Why? Why am I being detained? Am I free to go? If I'm not being free, if I'm not, if I'm not being detained and I'm not free to go, am I under arrest? What am I being charged with? Questions. Always question. Okay? Don't resist if he tries to put you in handcuffs. Let him put you in handcuffs. But you consistently state and you constantly have a recording device going. And that's where you'll stop police brutality. Make them accountable.
Reproductive freedom. Well, here's the thing is that reproductive freedom doesn't necessarily exist. And here's the reason why. If you're going to give a woman the right to have an abortion, then her partner, her male partner who contributed to the pregnancy needs to be informed of said abortion. And if he doesn't want it to occur, then they don't need, then it doesn't need to occur. If the woman doesn't want the child, then she gives the child up to the man if he wants it. If he doesn't want it, then let her have the abortion. That's the way I feel about it. That's, that's an honest feeling. Okay. Rape, murder, or rape, incest, sexual assault. They don't get a say. Okay. It's an endangerment to the woman's life that she's going to get pregnant or, or get pregnant and try to carry a child to term and it's going to be an endangerment to her life. She can have an abortion at that point if she so chooses. But it takes two to tango to get pregnant unless the woman goes to the abort or goes to the sperm clinic and gets a donation of sperm. In which case, she's not going to have an abortion. She wants that child. More power to her. Okay. But I kind of look at sperm banks like eugenics. Uh, they take the best of the best and the worst of the worst to throw out. I understand that's how they make their money and um, all four companies making their money. Okay. I'm a free market guy and they can run their business the way they want to. But women, if you go to a sperm clinic or a sperm bank and you go get an injection of sperm, don't expect to sue the guy that donated his sperm for 75 bucks to pay child support on that child. You were the one that paid to get the sperm donated to you. You're the one that's paying to raise that child all by yourself. Or if you finally get married, then that's that. Okay. Now, women, if you want to have the child and the guy doesn't want to have the child, then you need to release him from his parental responsibilities. Okay? And that includes releasing him from child support. Okay? If you're having the child to trap a man, then when he leaves, you don't get the right to go back and say, well, you know what? I've got his kid. I want his money. It doesn't work like that. And women, you can't punish a guy for stepping up and being part of his kids' lives by withholding those kids. You just don't get to. It happens more and more commonly. Guys either don't want the kids and want the woman to have an abortion and she, she doesn't want to have an abortion because she wants to punish the guy for the rest of his days or for the next 18 years. So she has the kid, keeps the kid, and raises the kid. Reproductive equality doesn't exist. And that's because women have more reproductive rights than men do. No wonder MGTOW goes so far as it does on YouTube. I'm not even going to touch the LGBTQIA lettering they've got here. I don't believe in two-spirit and I don't believe in gender nonconformity. <laughs> I do believe in LGBTQ rights. If you're gay, say you're gay. If you're straight, say you're straight. Okay. If you're male, call yourself a male. If you're female, call yourself a female. Genetically, you are that. And we go by genetics. Gender is not assigned. We believe in all workers, including domestic 
and farm workers have must have a right to organize and fight for a, min, a living minimum wage. This is a misnomer. There is no such thing as a living minimum wage. Minimum wage is an encouragement to step up in your careers. And if you're working at Burger King, that is not a career. A career is something you do to live a happy life. A job is something you have to hold you over between careers. If you so choose or if you so choose to change careers. A living minimum wage is not a reality. And never will be. Minimum wage is just that. Minimum. It's meant to get you by with the minimum of life's necessities. It's not designed so that you can drive a Ferrari. Undocumented and migrant workers, uh, let me translate undocumented to illegal, because that's what they are, must be included in our labor protections. Uh, if they're illegal immigrants, they're not protected anywhere. And we stand in full solidarity with sex workers' rights movement. This is where the next sentence is going to, going to confuse the crap out of you. We recognize that exploitation for sex and labor in all forms is a violation of human rights. Well, if it's a violation of human rights, why in the heck do you stand with sex workers' rights? We believe civil rights is our birthright. That you actually got right. Okay. To this end, we must protect. Actually, let me read on. We believe our we believe civil rights are our birthright. Our constitutional government establishes a framework to provide and expand rights and freedoms, not restrict them. I agree with that. To this end, we must protect and restore all the constitutionally mandated rights to our citizens. The last I looked, they were all included, including voting rights. They are freedom to worship without fear or intimidation or harassment. God, I wish you guys would actually stand up for that because the Christian church has been defamed dramatically in the last 30 years. Freedom of speech. Yeah, if you if you say a unpopular thing with the liberals, you're going to get shouted down as hate speech. Bigot misogynist uh-huh yeah you know the rest of it and protection for all citizens regardless of race gender age or disability well I'm a white cis male and I've been called such and that should be insulting okay but if you're gonna reinstitute all the rights of the Constitution then uh, I don't have to worry anything about my Second Amendment rights right oh wait no you're anti-gun so the Second Amendment shouldn't be included in that Contradicts to that statement. Thank you. Indigenous women's rights to access, own, develop, and control land. They have that. The uh, tribes control the resources beneath those grounds. Uh, they need to take that up with their tribal leaders. Not with the U.S. Constitution because the First Nations have their own set of laws within the framework of the United States. I'm sorry, but that's just the way that that cookie crumbles. And going to say that the 14th Amendment does not stand for and has been undermined by the courts, only to the exception of certain laws. Jim Crow laws were gone um, under the 14th Amendment. No, you cannot be born a male and use the women's restroom. I don't want a transgender guy going in where my daughter goes and use the restroom. And I'm not going to take my daughter into the men's restroom with me so that I can ensure that I don't have to worry about another guy going into the girls' restroom. That is the most asinine argument I've heard. Okay. If he's fully transgendered, I shouldn't be able to see him as male. Trans means transitioned. 
You know, if it were my daughter and Caitlyn Jenner going into the bath, going into the women's bathroom, I got not a problem with that. I'm under the assumption that Caitlyn Jenner has transitioned fully. I'm under that impression. May not be true, but I'm under that impression. Now, does that mean that just because a guy doesn't want to associate with either gender or wants to claim that he doesn't associate with either gender isn't just saying that because he wants to go and molest little kids going into the opposite sex as a bathroom. Um, that's where the law fails to protect my kids. So if you're going to put that down, might as well throw out the Sex, sex Offender Registry Act. Because that's essentially what you're doing. You're allowing pedophiles into the candy store. Sorry to say it. Again, they go on to cover um, illegal immigration and say that no human being is illegal uh, yes, under the Constitution or are. The, the immigration issue could be streamlined, okay? The path to citizenship could be streamlined, but you can't just have them jumping across the border and then screaming for asylum. That's not the way this show works. That's not the way the law works. And we cannot expect those who come over illegally to be fully appreciative of the laws of the land. That is why we have the citizenship rules that we have, the path to citizenship that we have. We believe that every person, every community, and indigenous peoples in our nation have the right to clean water, clean air, and access to and enjoy enjoyment of public lands. I agree with this, but what does your definition of enjoyment of public lands cover versus what my definition of enjoyment of public lands cover? Here in Missouri, we have public land hunts. We have access to fishing on public lands. I fish and I hunt. That's how partially I feel, feed my family. But if you're going to restrict my right to a gun, you're going to restrict my right to access to hunt these lands, I have a problem with that. Then at that point, they're no longer public lands. They're special use permits. That's what they are. They're special use. Okay. They're only special use to those who would not harm anything within it. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm not going to be a vegan, I'm not going to be a vegetarian. I eat meat and I enjoy venison. I enjoy duck, I enjoy dove, I enjoy quail, I enjoy pheasant, and I hunt all of that on public lands here in Missouri. But I grew up hunting dove and deer and duck in Texas. I'm all for protecting the environment. Okay. I'm all for alternative energy, but until alternative energy becomes affordable and feasible, then unfortunately we got to burn gas and coal. No way around it. Now, the last statement is absolutely communistic, and it's scary, okay? We recognize that to achieve any goals outlined within a statement, we must work together to end war and live in peace with our sisters and brothers around the world. Ending war means a cessation to the direct and indirect aggression caused by the war economy and the concentration of power in the hands 
of a wealthy elite who use political, social, and economic systems to safeguard and expand their powers. What does a one world order mean to you? Okay. Do you not realize that you just defined a one world order? Okay. But that those that are pushing for the one world order are also profiteering off of war. I'm not. I'm just a hillbilly in the middle of the Ozarks trying to get by, trying to live. I'm just a guy. I'm just one guy. That's who I am. One man. Yes, I have my issues. No, I don't believe we should join the global economy. Because then you put the power in the hands of the bankers. And guess what they're going to profit off of? Labor. Think you pay taxes now? Wait. Put the bankers in charge, see what happens to the interest rates of the global economy. And there's still going to be wars. They're going to be religious wars. We go right back to the Crusades. Is that what you really want? Crusades fought with nuclear weapons. Brilliant. <laughs> but again, I'm just one hillbilly. What the hell do I know? And I actually know a lot more than you idiots. Hey, we got to secure our border. We got to end drug use. We got to end that, this, that, and the other. Okay, medical marijuana. Hell, marijuana used. You know, ending the marijuana. Basically. I forgot what you what you would call that. The illegality of marijuana is something police officers have begged to get changed. You know, let them have a pound in their house. If they want to have a pound in their house, let them have a pound in their house. They've got a medical condition that they can use marijuana for, let them have it. They're not a problem with that. they got glaucoma, they got cancer, they got something else, go for it. And not a problem with it. We could tax it and be out of debt in five years. There are also studies that show that, and I forgot the percentage rate. I'd have to look it up in my book. I had to take it for a class that I had to take last year. Marijuana was prevalent in most traffic accident fatalities. So, yeah, that's the that's the downfall of it. Okay. It's not exactly harmless, but I don't know many people who go smoke dope and then go get behind the wheel. I know a few, but I know more who don't. And if you have stress and panic attacks so bad that you're smoking marijuana for it, Probably don't need to be driving anyway. Just my saying. Now, are there things that we could do to make it better? Yeah. Are there things that we could do to make it worse? Yeah. Is Trump going to make it worse? No. He's trying to make things better. We need to give him a chance to make things better. But nobody's trying to give trying to give him a chance. Everybody's trying to down him. I think this president for Republican might actually shock a few liberal Democrats. Hey, not all trade agreements are good. You need to renegotiate them. Not all taxes are good. And not all the social programs out there have done what they were intended to do. They were never intended to prop somebody up permanently. They were only meant to be temporary stop gaps in the points and times when their lives were upheld by loss of a job, loss of employment, something else. 
That's all it was there for. Ladies and gentlemen, I am the Repentant Conservative. I appreciate you watching. Y'all have a great day. See ya.